All right. Hey everyone. I'm Sharon and I'm here with Live with Prima and today we are going to hopefully create some really cute little tags. Check this out. Okay, camera. Cooperate. Yes, that's a little resin cupcake and check this one out. Okay, so I have two granddaughters. One is really girly. So I made her this cute little girly one, but my other granddaughter, Madeline, loves Paw Patrol. Oh my gosh. So this is for her. It's all about dogs and stuff, I guess. Anyway, so we're going to work and play and create these tags, but we're also going to feature a new product for Prima. So this is Metallic Accents, and it's a really nice big um, container of fun. Wait till you guys see what this can do. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll the camera down. It will turn black for just a minute, okay? But um, don't panic. I'm just flipping it so you don't have to be all dizzy when um, it, it scrolls around like that. You know how cameras can, you feel like you're on a boat? Yes. Okay, so here we go. Um, so these are the, the tags. Hopefully we'll get to do both of them. They have similar um, techniques on them. So don't we won't panic if we don't get them both completed. But I will show you the techniques for both. Okay? But what we're going to do first is go into um, our metallic accents. Now, this is a pretty big container. In fact, I think I have to zoom out just a bit so you can see it all. Look at that. Now, if you, you know what our confections look like, they're small containers filled with uh, really intense watercolors. There's a confections tin, and here's the metallic accent. So, really big container. All right, I just wanted to show you that for size. Everyone, you see a picture, but you don't really know how big it is. Now, these are metallic semi watercolor cakes. The semi is important because they can be used like a watercolor, okay? But just keep that in mind. Some of the properties are a little different. You do get a brush. You get mixing trays. It has beautiful colors. Um, let me see if you can see those. And then it's activated with water. And that's what I love is you have a lot of control over it. So we're going to go ahead and open up the tin or the container here and see these beautiful colors oh my gosh they're so fun we're gonna zoom in now and hope the camera can can focus there we go so it comes with a brush and it's cool if you do calligraphy or any brush work um, I am a terrible person for calligraphy like <laughs> I I would love to learn it but I did play a bit and you could you can thin these with water. I'm trying to catch the sheen on this. Anyway, it's shimmery. It's so cool. This was my first attempt, so remember that. And then I went to the back and started playing with mixing colors and all kinds of stuff. What I love is that you control the color. This one right here is a lot of the um, metallic accents applied with little water while this one is the same color but with a lot more water and can you see now how fun this is going to be because you are in control okay so let's go ahead and just jump into what this can do we saw it works on watercolor paper now I've shown this on a, a Facebook live so if you saw that just pretend this is new these are just watercolor leaves that I cut out with our dyes and then colored with the the different um, colors here this is a different one and I think I used that color so what I'm gonna use is just I'm gonna take one of our water brushes it has water in there already I have a leaf that is um, cut out of our watercolor paper with one of our leaf dyes already okay I know the focus is messing up because I'm wiggling all over with my leaves we're gonna go ahead and pull out this color right here and we're gonna start playing so it's solid right now um, we're gonna go ahead and just squeeze a little a couple drops of water in there start working it up now if I took it right now it probably would be very watery 
see that? So I just want to make sure I'm getting the water in there. It starts to activate and work with the pan. The more I go, the, the darker it's going to get. Okay. You control that. I put a couple drops in. It's actually more than I think I wanted. But you can see right there, you get the really light to the intense color. We're going to go ahead then and just color our leaf. Let me um, go up closer for you. And that's what's cool on this is you could totally do like an ombre effect. Um, start with your lighter color when you first start to mix and then go in and, and you could add the more intense color maybe at the bottom. I didn't think of doing that until just now, but how cool would that be? I could totally like get some off with paper towel. But very fun and of course you can mix your colors so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this red okay my colors are not official I should have learned the names or I could go in and pull out some of the gold that might not show up on top you probably want to do your lighter colors first but you get the idea right it's just very fun and very cool now when this dries it's gonna be glimmery okay so keep that in mind. So we know it does paper. What else can it do? Let's go ahead and look at wood. So I have some wood letters. These are from our um, alphabet sets that just came out this summer. And they're perfect for coloring. So what I'm going to do, I have, okay, I took every water brush I own. Because for this, I don't want to waste my metallic accents. So if I've already been playing with them, I want to keep, I don't want to wash them out all the time. That's why you need a bunch of these. Okay. Um, but let me show you some of the wood I've already colored. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. This was a really light wash of this color down here. Okay, the camera was trying to grab it there. And then the other side is more intense, so less water. See that? Magic. Magic. It's amazing, and it's glimmery. Oh my gosh, I love it. Here's another one. Now this uses, uh, I think I mixed these two. So more of a wash so you can still see the wood grain. And then less water is going to give you this um, full coverage I know it can grab it. I have to speak magic to my camera. It's not going to work for me today. <laughs> it's really sensitive, but anyway, you can tell there's the wood grain shows through or not, and that's totally up to you. So let's go ahead and color one. What color should we do? I want to do one I haven't done yet. Like, I've been playing with all the really, oh, they're just amazing. Let's go ahead to the dark. Great, so what I'm going to do, oh, I squeezed probably three drops. I probably don't want that much. Okay, I grabbed it right away, and here I have a really nice wash. Can you see that? Perfect. Just gorgeous if you want a bit of the wood grain to show through. But the other side, we're going to go ahead and mix this up. I probably put a little too much water in there, but that's okay. Oh, wow. I'm getting the full coverage already. Can you see that? But, like, there's hardly any wood grain showing through. And what I would do is just color it how you like it. Add water till you like um, the effect, and you're good to go. And it's going to dry all metallic-y and beautiful. How fun is that? So now we know it works beautifully on wood. And you need to get those wood alphas. They're really fun. Um, we've also, oh, I have another wood one. So I know the big alphas are cool, but these little Julie Nutting wood dolls, oh my gosh. I started playing around with it and then went, I have to stop because I actually have to get ready for the show. So they come in a jar like this. 
and Carrie didn't know I was doing this one, so I'll find the number. 911041. There are 30 dolls in here, and you could just color away all of these, and the metallic accents are perfect for this. And I'll tell you why, because they're, they're semi-watercolors, okay? So they, they still let the design show through, but they color it really well, and her little dress is all shimmery. It's so pretty. I'm hoping the camera can catch it. But I thought maybe we would go in and um, watercolor her. Now, she reminds me of Cinderella, so I totally need to do... Let's do pink. I know Cinderella had a blue dress, but I already did purple. So we could go in here. No, as I don't know if I said this. Your first coat, if you want lighter colors, do that first with a lot more of the water. But then work that paint in. You're really just getting deeper layers mixed in, so you're getting a thicker coat. And I'm just going to put that in on her outer skirt so we get multiple tones here. And I think I might go in with um, white on that over skirt, but i got to catch. This is where it would be better if I used the little brush. i got to catch her like crown in the top of her dress here. It's going to be so cute, though. Where's that little brush? I might go in and grab some of this pearly white. So if you have a detail brush, obviously it's going to work better, but how fun is this? You need to get a jar of those wood dolls because you could just sit and paint them all day long. Nobody, we won't judge you for it. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. They can make earrings, um, charms. You can hang them off your planners, people. Um, Christmas ornaments. Like, I put some of these on Christmas presents, like a little Christmas charm last, last year for my granddaughters. They love this stuff. So, we'll pretend she's done. She's got to dry, but she's going to be all pink and white pearls and all sparkly, okay? That color does. It sits on there, and it's semi-sheer. So, if the, the wood um, design is still going to show through, not as clearly... But you can see when it dries, it's pretty magical. It's pretty cool. All right, so wood. We did a lot of wood. And the last, well, I have a couple things. Some I won't do. We're going to be doing resins later in the show. But I wanted to show you the relics. Um, Sandra has relics and artifacts. And they're really little ones. And then there's some of these bigger ones. This is an adorable little finch, and this is one of the butterflies that come in the butterfly kit, which has seven pieces. Um, it's a matte resin, and this is the papillon, which is French for butterfly. And my kids laugh at me when I pronounce that, but I, I know how to pronounce it. I may not be able to say it right. It's um, 942366, and it comes with multiple pieces, so you can just have fun with this. Now, I went in already and played on the back and did like a watercolor um, wash and then started mixing colors. So that's the genius of this product is that you can play with it like a watercolor. Can you see that? I just dropped colors in and let it dry like just natural. I didn't fool around very much and it sat there and it's shimmery in areas. So we're going to go ahead to the front I'm going to find my colors, my brushes, and what I probably should have just washed them out. I want to find, um, what color do you guys want to do? Okay, what I'm going to do is if you want more color, don't wet it down. On this one, I did a wash of water first and then started adding my colors. But I love that. Does that look so cool? Okay, I think... I'll just go with these three colors and maybe have some fun with that. They might show up the best on camera anyway. So I need to get it worked in a little bit. When you first put the water on, you're going to get more of a, a wash effect, like a true watercolor. And there's nothing really on the resin to show through, so it looks like a true watercolor on here. 
So let's go ahead and do a wash with just this, um, the lavender. And I can see the glimmer coming out already on this. Now I'm not going to be too perfect. I will go back and perfect it later. It's already shimmering. I don't know if it, you can catch that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Okay, let's go over to this side. Now I have less water and you can see already two totally different colors so you control it. So let's, I'm just squeezing out a little bit of water straight from my water brush. That's why these are so magical too. You've got to have a water brush. I'm, I rarely go back to a paintbrush now because these are so less messy and you can travel with them. You can take a little bit of water with you in the car and paint while you're waiting for your kids. How fun is that? So now that I have that layer, I'm going to just come in and pull out some of the pink, I think. Okay, I'm not artistic. I'm just going to be upfront with you. I can craft, but I'm not artistic. So if this really looks terrible, that's okay. You can laugh. I'm just bringing in some of the pink um, for like movement on the wings. I don't want it all cover. I don't want to cover up all the purple. We're just getting more shimmer in there. Okay. Oh gosh, the girls are having so much fun on the chat and I'm missing out on it. Somebody's talking about what they're going to pack for their anniversary. Carrie's making suggestions. Oh boy. Now, I think I just want to add a touch of the blue just to kind of pull three colors in here. I told you, I'm not artistic. <laughs> and guess what? You can also splash with this. So. I may just come in here and put some spatters on her, make her look like a real butterfly. Don't they have those random spots? Okay, on camera it looks really bold. It, it's not quite this drastic to me, but it's so fun. The matte resins and the relics line are perfect for these metallic accents. Oh my gosh, you gotta get it. So lots of different ways you could go pastel, you could do it bolder of course, beautiful great great um, medium to try these on okay I have just a couple more this one I probably won't demo I'll just show you a little magic this is uh, an IOD charm and this bottom was the clear crystal color and I took a touch of that purple with a little tiny bit of pink and I painted it on here on both sides and just let it dry and it is gorgeous I'm going to see if I can get it on white. It's still sheer. Oh, come on. It's still sheer, but it just is glimmery now. See that? Okay. Is this opening up ideas? All right. The last thing I want to demo are metals. So, um, mechanicals. We have different metal embellishments. And there was a project I was making, and I didn't, I don't know what color I had left, but I didn't want that color. Isn't that how we all are? So I took out my metallic accents and I painted it. Now, when I was done, it has this copper color on it. How cool is that? I painted it and let it dry, air dry. And it is colored now. I didn't color all the way to the edges, but it does not rub off. So it looks like it's permanent on metal, which is amazing. Okay, what color do I want to do for that? We're, we're just going to pull out a fun color. Something that, maybe the blue, we haven't done a lot with it, and it's kind of sitting here ready to be painted. Oh my gosh, look at that. So that's what you want to do is like dab in a lot of that color and then you just set it down and that's the hardest part you have to wait for it to dry okay so try wood paper resins relics metal chandelier drops all of those work with the metallic accents all right any questions on that because we're gonna go ahead and jump into the actual class now and hopefully finish in time remind me to wash my brushes out <laughs> 
Okay, first up, we're going to do Miss Cupcake. And it's just a cute little party tag. You could personalize it or put happy birthday on it. Um, the focus doesn't want to work right now, but that's okay. We're going to get moving and it will it will come back. So we're going to start with watercolor um, paper. And that is from this tag pad right here. And I'm going to shut the autofocus off real quick so it can just stay focused right here. And I can move around then. Yay. And it won't um, mess it all up. So this watercolor paper pad is one of my favorites. Um, I'm looking for the size. I think it's three by six and a quarter. Eight four seven seven one five. And then I have a Finnevere stencil, and I did not. I don't have the number, but I know Carrie does. And we're gonna just go ahead and put some modeling paste on here. Really simple. I just gotta find my tool. There it is. So I'm using our new tubes of art mediums. You guys, these are so, so convenient. Look at this. Squeeze and apply. No bottles, no sticky caps, portable, totally cool. Um, let me grab some paper towel. I'm learning now. I saw Kat put like wax paper down and then remove her sheets and I went, she is brilliant. So I'm going to try this. I probably need a little more than that. So just paste. I don't care. I usually use light paste. This is just regular. And um, I know I'm covering up a big part of my tag over here. I'm really just going to focus on the top and the bottom. Like where did it, where is it? <laughs> you can't see it because it's all white on white. I might want a little bit more. You hardly use any, so don't worry. If you want to do the whole tag, you could totally do that. When I first started, I wasn't sure where I was heading. I probably did the whole tag. That's it. Right there. I'm just cleaning up now so it's less work to wash. And I have great texture. Um, it's all going to sit here and dry. And you know how you get little nubbies on the end? I do just run my finger so I don't have any paste hanging off. And then we're going to set that aside to dry. And while we're at it, let's do our other tag, um, the doggy tag at the same time. And you know what is really fun? I remembered having a stencil that kind of looked like a dog pa um, paw. I know it's not. I know it's a flower. But doesn't it kind of look like a little, you know, like they run through your house with mud? And that is uh, Forget Me Nots, 579999. So we're going to go ahead and do our doggy tag at the same time. And go ahead and put the paste on so they can both dry just like that. Now, where did I put my doggy? We'll get little paw prints all over the tag. It would be adorable. So these are not flowers. These are dirty little doggy prints. So a couple up at the top, and then I want a lot on the bottom, I think. I'm being really frugal with that paste. Normally, I am not like that. I usually have too much. So that's weird. Okay. And then that one will just... Oh, I need more than that. Like, he's going to make a bigger mess than this, I think. So I may just put a little random paste here and there. Just to bring the pattern all the way to the edge. I think that'll work. You think that'll work? Okay, we're gonna set these to dry. And just a tip, if your stencils have color bloom left on them because you didn't clean them, you're gonna color your paste. Don't ask me how I know that. So, um, all right, so you wanna clean off your stencil then and that's what I'm gonna just wipe it down real quick. All right. And then set these aside to dry. Um, and ta-da! I actually pre-did them so I have them dry so we can get right into the fun part. Okay, so we have our metallic accents. And what we're going to do first is go in here and just start coloring. 
I keep setting my paper towel somewhere else and then I can't find it. Like, what is wrong with me? Okay, this one's new. So what we're going to do first is the lightest color. And I'm going to go in and pick up this champagne. Oh my gosh. It's lighter right now. Remember when you first put your water in there? It's going to be lighter and it's going to be more like a real watercolor. And we're just going random with this, okay? Oops, I don't really want to color the whole tag. I just want a bit of yellow out towards the edges. And kind of random with the um, tones. So there's a little bit of darker yellow and some lighter yellow. You know, I have a window that throws so much light, which is great, but at times when you're using a lighter color, it almost washes it all out. Tisk tisk. Okay, it's really not washed out. Okay, it actually is a really pretty yellow. So we want that to dry. We don't want to mix it. So I'm going to grab my heat gun and we're going to zap that just for a second. Not too long, just so your colors don't muddy up and make some ugly thing. Which with these colors we're using it won't, it will be really pretty. Just a little zap. Now what we're going to do, I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm going to go right into the pink and start bringing some pink in. Again, maybe I should have cleaned my brush because I want more pink and less yellowy pink. We're going to go ahead and just get some pink moving in here. Now, when you put this on, if you don't like how it's moving or it's it's too too pinky, squeeze a little water from your water brush, and you can help move that along um, just by moving your paper around. So let me get a little bit more pink up here. Okay, see I have brush marks. It's not blended well there. I'm going to just squeeze a tiny bit of water and kind of nudge it a little to start moving. And I think I like that. I might want some more watercolor effect down here. So what I'm going to do is actually put the color up higher, add a little water, and then let it drip down. And it will not want to drip over the little bumps, so you help it a little with your um, water brush. And I kind of like that. I think we'll stay with that right there. It's always going to dry just a tad lighter. So make it just a little bit darker than what you really want. And you know while we're here, should I get spatters? You need a little bit of water for the spatters. Um, but let's do that. We'll put a couple on there right now. Okay, I'm going to zap this real quickly and then we can get going with um, the embellishing. But you got to see when it's dry, it's actually shimmery. And what I should be doing is probably coloring the doggy one at the same time, but then I get myself confused. If you guys have any questions on this while, while it's drying? What's going to happen is it's going to have a really pearly, sparkly effect. So, yeah, you can get this effect with color bloom sprays, but this one's much more versatile in the fact that you control how um, much water is added, so how spreadable it is. That makes sense. Okay, that's pretty dry. So you have really pretty pinks and yellows and it sparkles in the light. It's gorgeous. So we're now what we're going to do is just kind of build the tag and then we'll come back with the metallic accents and color the flowers and different things. So um, we want to start out with some 
flowers. So these are lace flowers and I'm going to cut it in half just to save money. You cover up most of it anyway. Um, so I'm just going to set this on here and figure out where I'm going. You know what I did, I need to do is water or um, put metallic accents on my cupcake. So I need to pick one. Which one do I want? I took one of these. And all I did, this seriously was so easy. It dries lighter, yes. Did I not say that? Carrie's asking me. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I know I'm off camera here with my metallic accents. I'll do a lighter wash of the pink first, just to make sure the whole bottom of the liner gets covered. I'm going to dry off my brush a bit and then pull in some of the creamier, darker color. And I actually think I did this three times. I did a lighter color, let it kind of dry a little, went in, and I kept adding color till I was happy, till I liked it. And that's what you're going to do. So I think that looks great. And right now it just looks like hot pink, but it's really going to dry um, sparkly. So I'm going to clean off my brush. I just have a paper towel right here. I'm squeezing on a little bit of water. Now for the top, I wanted just a really pretty, we're going with the same colors. Do just a pretty wash of the really light. And it's okay if you, I think, if you leave some of the white exposed. And then um, I'm going to come in with a bit of the white, too, just so all of the white has pearly, sparkly on it. And I probably went in and added, once that dried, you could go in and add some of the darker color into creases just to make it look even more 3D. These resins are so... Cool. We have frogs and and um, puppies and cupcakes and dragonflies. Oh my gosh! I dug them out the other day and said I need to play with these. Let me show you the dragonflies. How cute are those? And that is eight nine two five two four. And then look at these. Aren't those a hoot? Ha. Okay, pun, 892593. You guys have got to look these up and find them. Besides the cupcakes. So we're going to let Mr. Cupcake dry over here real quickly. And we'll go back in here and start um, embellishing. Let's. We can probably zoom in a little bit so you can see better. We'll make sure it's focused. Can you guys see that okay? Oh gosh, I think it was focused better before. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I have a love-hate with this autofocus thing. Okay, so we have that. We're going to throw in a little bit of ribbon. Let me find it. I like to create depth, and I use um, this gorgeous ribbon all the time because it's puffy. Uh, it's so great on tags, and that's Parisian ruffle trim. So I just want a couple. Let's do three. Always nice with three, so you get like an odd number. And I did cut them apart um, so I could kind of make a triangle with them. And they're just going to get glued on here. I don't even remember how I did it, but kind of like that a little power puff there. And then this guy will come in. We'll, we'll be putting him in that flower in when we get a little bit closer to gluing everything down. We need some flowers, so these are just box flowers. You notice everything's white right now, because we're going to color with the metallic accents. And then we need some of these flowers. Okay, Carrie, this is the one I don't have the name and number for. I just took it out ahead of time to prep. They're gorgeous. They're I think they're heaven sent, and they're just beautiful. Aren't those pretty? Ah, love them. We'll figure out where we're going to stick those once we start gluing some of this other stuff down. So I'm going to do that. I like kind of where this is sitting. So we'll just get a little bit of glue. 
oh, you know what? I could totally use our, our planner glue for this, couldn't I? <gasps> Where did I put it? Well, let me glue the flowers on and then we can do that. The planner glue sticks, if you have not tried them yet, they are amazing. They really, really stick. I couldn't believe it. I have been using them now instead of Fabri-Tac for a mi million different things. That doesn't go that far out. Um, it's, and it's, you don't have these gloopy effects. I mean, I love my Fabri-Tac, but I had to tell myself, move over. There's room for two adhesives in your life. So now I love the planner. Um, glue pens just as much as I love Fabri-Tac and that's saying a lot right there. You guys know that These are what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, and they're so easy and convenient Anyway, so you can totally use these to glue down anything they stick so well um, So for fabrics and stuff if you don't want it stuck to your tip I would totally just stick with Fabri-Tac for that, but it does work so we're going to go ahead and get the flowers glued down. We're just creating a lot of texture and depth right now. I know I have this little guy or this little guy. And he's going to just sneak in right here and kind of cover up that seam from the flower. So then you, no one will know you cut it in half. And there's a peach guy up here at the top. You know, I'm having so much fun, I haven't paid attention, but um, we do have a chat. And if you you come to our live shows, you can get in on the chat. This is what I love about these. They The glue lets you move things around. And you know what I totally forgot to do? Well, it's okay. I forgot my pom-pom trim. And you need the pom-pom trim. So I just pick random trims and add them on here. So we'll we'll sneak it in. I'll just show you that I'm like everyone else and I make mistakes. So we're going to do just a strip of glue. I'm glad the glue stayed wet. And we'll put the pom-poms on top. And then I smooshed them together just a little bit. So let me unwind this. Because I want my pom poms a little bit closer than what they are right there. So we'll go ahead. I'm just pinching them together. Just trying to make sure I leave enough so it goes all the way to the end. That's what's so cool about this is that you can keep adjusting this. And you know what? Let's move this flower kind of cover up that seam a little. There we go. I was wondering what, I was like, something doesn't look right. Well, now I know. What? This totally should be on top of. We're going to go with it. We'll stick something over here. Maybe a flower. I think there's another flower. I This one may just be different than my original. Isn't that how it always works? Um, you go to recreate it, and it's just a slightly different but that's okay I think that works really well and see how puffy this is oh my gosh it's so fun okay Carrie's laughing at me for something but I, I don't know which thing I did that was so funny all right we got everything in here and now what we're gonna do is just add some texture so do you guys ever play with thread Okay, I just have some lime thread. I'm wrapping it around my hand like six or seven times. We're going to snip it. Try to find a center point. And then this is, this is messy and it can be a little frustrating sometimes, but it really is fun. Put a little dab of glue and I'm just sticking it right in the center of my tag. I'm going to rub the glue off my hand real quick. And I bring in all my little edges. And what we're doing, you don't want the cut ends to show. That's the main thing. We're just putting in a fun little textural element here. And I think I'm, I actually did two of these. 
So wrap the thread around your hand like six or seven times. Snip it. You'll have a nice little ring like that. Kind of pull it apart. I bring it into the center so I can get a glob of glue on that. Although I have some glue in there. Look at that. It just filled it up just like that. So there is actually green thread in here that I know it can be hard hard to see when the camera is not super close. But let's bring that in. See that? It's just kind of messy fun. Okay. Are we focused? There we go. So we got the green thread on there. We're going to go ahead and glue Mr. Cupcake in. And I was going to tell you, the glue pens dry clear, so don't worry what cute color you picked out. It's all going to work. I, you know, you could pop these up with foam dots. I actually think I did that if you wanted to. Now, I put the cupcake down, and there's a reason for that before I add this curly... Um, party stuff. Uh, what is this stuff called again? I swear when I teach I just lose names. Carrie will know. What is it? Streamers? Okay, so I did glue the cupcake down on purpose because when you go to glue these babies they want to take off on you. So what I'm gonna do, the cupcake's not gonna dry for a good minute or so. I am gonna curl these and then tuck them under Mr. Cupcake. That way they're going to stay put. So just curl on your scissors. I know you guys know how to do this, right? I, I saw the gold streamers and thought they're the cutest thing ever for a little cupcake tag. I may need to go buy a whole lot more of this. So I'm going to do just three of these. So curl a couple inches, put a little glue under there, and then sneak them under your cupcake. And you can kind of position them. The curls are all going to be different. You know how that is. Kind of put them where they work. You, they, you don't need to have your curls exactly where mine are. Just do three of them. Okay. I glued the others this way so more gold would show. But I'm wondering if this one needs... We'll see. Curling ribbon. I think it's called streamer ribbon. Whatever, you know you need it. So we're going to have fun. It makes a little party on your tag. I'm just sneaking this one under. If it lets me, all that thread's in the way. No, don't uncurl on me. Okay, cooperate. There you go. We're on live TV. You need to behave. This one doesn't want to curl as much. Um... But that's okay. We'll, we'll, you, you fill it in with other stuff. There's so much going on here that it's almost crazy. So what we want to do now is go ahead and get our last little element on, and that is just some twine, which i got to find. It's right in front of my face. So what I'm doing is pulling out yellow trim, 576912, and just actually what I'm going to do is wrap it around and tie it off like that. I know that's not the real way to make bows, but it'll work. Except where's my other end? Okay, well, I'll figure something out. So I wrapped it around and pinched it in the middle. Actually, I should... I know what I did. I took off another piece and tied it. I stink at bows, especially when they're two or three... Um, loops. So this is how I cheat. I just loop it around my hand, pull it in the middle, and then do a separate tie. Okay, please work this time. It, 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 watch it not work just because. All right, I think it's good. It looks pretty crazy. But you can adjust and pull in some of your loops. And then that's going to just go right here. It's a big crazy birthday bow. Just one little dab of glue and then tuck this like right at the base there. 
and then you can arrange your bow, your loops, and your ties, which I probably should have done before I glued it down. But um, just have fun with it. It's supposed to be just fun and random, and then you can trim these off if you want. All right, now what we're gonna do. If I think I have enough flowers on here, but I'm not quite sure. I almost think I want one more just because I do. We'll see. Maybe, maybe right here. I can't, I can't decide. We're going to go in with the confections right now and we're going to just going to color away. Oh, that might be cute on that. Yes. I didn't do it on my other one, but I'm going to hide my, my ugly little thing my little tie. Let's do that. And then we're good to go. Okay, we're coming back in to the confections. And we're going to come in here and we're going to color all of these elements and just have fun. And this is what's really going to pull it all together. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the champagne color. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Now I don't want to color the whole flower. But I did put some on the edges, and now I'm squeezing a little bit of water in. It might help if I went in closer to show you. So I touched the edges, but I want some of the white to show. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, put a little bit on. I'm just dabbing elements at this point. I don't think I glued that down. We're just dabbing elements here and there just to kind of pull this all together. And it's gonna work. Now we're cleaning the brush and we're gonna go in and grab a little bit of the pink. Okay, so I'm just kissing the edges of this flower. And then I'm gonna squeeze water on it and it's gonna bleed in just a little bit. Cause it does act like a watercolor, remember? Very cool. And of course you can make it as light or as dark as you want. I really need to glue this flower down. I do not think I glued it. I'm just randomly coming in here and getting a little bit of color on the flowers, the trims. And what else? I think that looks I think that's good. I have a lot of pink going on. I have a lot of the yellow here and there. And I think I want to leave it just like that. And what I want to do is just add some splatters. So you know for that, you cut, your brush has to be a bit wet. So let me go ahead and turn this around and just use a mixing tray for that. So here I have the pink. And what I want to do is better the flowers especially they look so cute with these little spatters on there all right we're gonna pretend that's done because I know I need to hustle Carrie's gonna sit here and go she hasn't started her second tag <laughs> so the only other elements are beads and sequins so yes lots of fun on this tag and I may not finish the second one. I'll show you some of the elements that I switched out. So what you want to do is get just a little bit of gloss gel. Pretend your whole tag is dry. And I basically kept the gloss gel. Well, now I can glue that down at the same time. Put the gloss gel kind of on the edges, especially on the top and on the bottom and the, that side, wherever you want glass beads. Does that help? So you could, I think I even sprinkled some up on my cupcake, but what else did I put on there? There's a sugar missing. I need, I have another jar of something I'm supposed to put on here. Here it is. Blush, um, sugary things. They're micro beads and you know how much I love these. I have a love hate relationship with them. They look like um, sprinkles on your cupcake though. So I'm just sprinkling on the blush sugar. 
because this is a party cupcake and now I hope I have enough um, gel left that's not covered in sugar to put some of the beads on. So two sizes of little embellishments here. And we are done. Oh no, I didn't do my sequence. Oh my gosh. Sharon, why do you put so much stuff on your tags? <laughs> so I have iridescent sequins. And instead of doing each one, I'm just going to show you the finished one. So I added, um, let's see if it can pull it up. There's one up there. And they're, they're very subtle, but they'll add the perfect little touch. Okay, so there you go. Pretend I already did that. So we have this tag totally done, and I'm going to quickly pop over to the other one. And we're going to rush a little bit through that because you already know um, some of the techniques that we used. Um, we have our, our um, paste applied over that stencil. And then we are going to come in here and we're going to color it. So let's get something in here that's colorable. So here's our original little puppy right here. And what I did is I pulled out, um, I seem to have a love for this champagne. I don't know what's wrong with me. But yellow and blue go well together. So again, adding a little in and then adding just a bit of water and um, mainly concentrating on the bottom, the top, and the sides because we're throwing in a lot of embellishments over here. Clean my brush and we're going to go in, zap it real quickly um, with the heat gun. Otherwise our tag will be green. Okay, I'm cracking carry up. You guys gotta come to our chat. It's just fun. I'm missing out today, but when I'm in there as the mod, I try to have fun. And I know they're all having fun on me and I, I can't read what they're writing. So what we're gonna do now is pull out a little of this blue and then we will pull out a little bit of that mint. Okay, so let me just, let me get this zoomed um, or focused. And let's zoom out just a little bit. Okay, so I'm adding blue in now and I'm trying not to make green. I did, really didn't give it enough time to dry, but we're gonna pretend here. And then come in with the mint. The mint kind of pulls this whole thing together. It's such a pretty color. I know this looks terrible, honestly. And my water brush is out of water, so I gotta go find another one. I've been doing a lot of coloring. But look at this. Oh, I love how these colors work together. Let's call this done just so we can finish. You saw how to color it before. Okay, so same thing. We're just going to build up some embellishments. We're going to add some cheesecloth. And if you don't like cheesecloth or have never used it, oh my goodness. I have just uh, like a three inch by three, but it's doubled. And what I do is I just grab it in the middle like this. Put a little dab of glue on there if it ever comes out. There we go. And kind of stick it down on my tag. And what that glue is going to do is allow you to kind of pull it in and crumple it. We'll fix it as we get going, but that just will hold the base down. Then we're going to go ahead with that ruffle trim again. So some of these steps are repeats, but I think it makes your tags look coordinated and cute. We'll do three of these flowers. And you know what, I let me go ahead and I want to um, just glue this down and then we'll col color our little puppy so that he's not totally wet when we go to glue him down. So we're just creating some fluffy texture here 
and um, the little piece of cheesecloth kind of is like his blanket. Okay, is that cute or what? His doggies have to have a blanket, right? I don't have a pet because I have kids allergic to them, but um, now my daughter has one and she sends pictures like it's a child. Look, look at what, and their dog is Woody. Look what Woody did today. So let's do this one. You know, there's a bone that comes in the set. I already used it, but it's so cute. Oh my gosh. So we won't have a bone on this one, but while that's setting up and drying, we're gonna go ahead and come in here and color this one. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, I don't know, you can color your puppy any color. Like, what color is your dog? That's what you wanna do. So I'm mixing, actually I have bronze on my brush, and I have a little bit of, I tell you I love that champagne. Oh my gosh, it's the best color. But I think you could go in here and just have fun with it. So once you put your lighter color down, go back in and get some of those, those darker tones, especially if your puppy is like copy, copper colored or, we're gonna pretend he's done. You know how to color now with this. Except I keep playing with it. We'll just set him aside. And when he just dry, I would go back in with the darker colors and touch up his ears and tail and stuff. So we're going to let him dry. And we'll come in here and we're going to just do some of the embellishments. We have some of the navy thread this time. And we're going to wrap it around our hand three times. You need to do odd numbers. And three seems to be good. So that looks good. Tie, cut it off right here. You know, when you're putting string on like this, it can be tough to um, corral it. But if you're going to be gluing anything down, that's where I would put the ends. So let's just set it here. We're going to add a flower. We're going to add some flowers. So again, I have these same flowers out, but this time I'm kind of picking some masculine colors. I need another flower. So I have these. Um, I need to just cut one off. It's going to hold everything flat. That's, that's my little trick. It's going to hold that string down and then give me kind of a flat surface for adding the doggy and other things like that. Does that make sense? Because you don't want it all warped like hanging off the side so this is going to go down there and then we will put a little piece of twine this trim it's more masculine plus it looks like oh it's so cute I love this stuff so just tie one little bow or one little knot trim it off now the trick for this is this is going to add some stability and some um, depth right here so your bow can stay kind of flat. Does that make sense? So it pulls up that bottom area. So let's go ahead and glue. I know I'm rushing. Oh, I still have a minute. Why am I rushing? Kidding, kidding. I think that bow goes down a little bit more. We're going to put just some cute flowers. Again, those are from the same pack we used for the little princess cupcake one. This doggy's a different... I have to redo this one because he's just a little bit different sized. So it'll work. And then we want one more flower up here. You know, last time I glued down the string with it, but I don't know if I want to. Maybe it's two of the strings. I don't think I want them all glued down. And we'll, if you're going to put the bone there, take out the little bead. You just pull it off. But I don't have a bone this time to put, so we're going to leave that on there. Okay, Rover, you ready for a little copper? See? I love how this stuff works. You can just go in and accent him. 
bring in some darker colors. Oh, love it. He's going to be jumping down here. So that white flower, you don't see a lot of it. It's just really there for um, a base. I think we're done with flowers. Let's go in and um, what we're going to do is add some product. So on this one, I thought it would be really fun to get some art stones because they kind of, it's not what dogs do, they run around. It's more of a fun look. So what we're going to do, let me zoom out just a little bit here so we can get more stuff into the picture. And we have art stones and mini art stones. And what we're going to do is put gel down. You can see the texture difference on these. We'll put some gel down and then just sprinkle that stuff on. All right. Any questions so far? I know I this one I'm really hustling on, but I wanted you guys to see all the cool ways to use the metallic accents in the beginning. So we want to just paste this stuff, a little bit of gel there at the bottom. And I actually am going to leave more than I normally would. See how much I got on there. Because I want to throw in some art stones. And those are bulkier. So I might start with those first. Oh my gosh, they're stuck to my fingers. <laughs> they're super lightweight. If you're looking for something for texture um, that's not going to add weight to your project, the art stones are the way to go. Very, very, very lightweight. And then we want some up here. And I'm trying to get a little bit onto the cheesecloth because I think it's so cute just randomly sprinkled in there. And these are colorable. That's why I'm putting them on first because we're going to go ahead. Okay, pretend I got them all over. Now I'm going to go with the fine, um, the finer mini art stones. What they'll do is they'll fill in areas and add even more texture. That bowl keeps hiding that little spot. Okay, the last thing I want to sprinkle on are some copper um, micro beads. This is just for some contrast. Hopefully I still have some glue uh, gel that's wet. Oh yeah. Plus, I think it's so cute. It kind of reminds you of the, when your puppy runs through out in the mud and then comes in your house. Yeah. Dude, these, I need more. There we go. How fun is that? Okay, I know the sun blocks some of this. There's some coming in, but you're starting to build all kinds of different texture and color on there with your art stones and your micro beads. And then what you would do is you want to dry that. Because sometimes when you go to color, if it's not dry, you're just going to pull your art stones back up. So make sure they're really glued down and dried. And then you can go in and start coloring the whole tag um, any color you want with the metallic accents. It's going to be so cool. We'll pretend that's dry and we'll just hope it works. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with... Let's do some blues first. Can you guys see this okay? Okay, so we're going to go in and get, I'm, I'm just dabbing blue on the cheesecloth. See that? But then I'm going to squeeze a little water and get it running in there so it's like a watercolor effect. You see that spreading out like that? And then at, do at least two colors, if not three, so that they blend together. So now I have that seafoam green. And it's it's I it looks more bold on camera than it actually is. It will dry a little bit lighter. Okay? So it's okay if that cheesecloth is all wet like that. Now this part, the stones may come off. I'm I'm trying to dab carefully. 
stay put. If they're dry and you used enough gel, it would be okay. If you're doing it live on a show and you didn't dry it all the way, you might have some issues. <laughs> I'm just being honest here. So I'm using these two colors right here and I'm just going in and getting a little of both on here so this can... Don't worry about what you get it on. Like at this point you want to start tapping um, the flour, you want to get the cheesecloth, and you want to get a little bit of water in there just to push some of that around. It's still pretty white, but you want a little bit of white left. Oops. You want some contrast. And again, you can go in there and add um, some splashes. You know, way back when I did woodcrafts, I had a brush that you just twirled and it did these spatters for you. Do you think I can find it? No. So now I got, again, back to doing it manually. So splash it up a little bit. I would do two colors of splashes. I do that blue and I go in here with this copper. Oh, I think this is gonna look so cool and get some different contrast in there. And then you're gonna just put your, um, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do sequins, and these are from um, Remnant Fragments. Is that right, Carrie, or am I backwards? They're the gorgeous, gorgeous color. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. And you wanna put just a couple of these on and I'll show you my little tip for doing it. I don't. I haven't found an easier way. I've tried all kinds of ways. I throw a tiny little bit of Fabri-Tac on my work table. I pick up a sequin, rub it in there, and then I just stick it on. It helps if you have, what was I looking for? Something to poke it off of your finger because your finger's gonna get um, a little bit of glue on it at some point. All right, while I'm putting these on, let me tell you what's happening. Face, uh, Prima got a brand new Instagram account, and it's mixed media. Now, how fun is that? So look up Prima underscore mixed media on Instagram and, and go follow us. And you know what? When you do a project, please tag us because we will be reposting all kind. Oh, gosh, did I just put that in the glue? <laughs> We'll be reposting all kinds of projects that you guys, we want to share what you're making. So mix me, uh, Prima underscore mixed media. And you're going to love it. Um, we're trying to get section that out a little bit so that the mixed media projects are um, showcased on their own Prima place. I think that will be so fun. All right. So I would sprinkle in six or seven different sequins and um, I think you're good to go right there. So let, I'm, I just want to zoom in. This one's still wet. Like if I let go of the tag, it kind of is limp in my hand. Um, speaking of mixed media, I'll show you the original too. Miranda is coming up next and she is going to be doing a mixed media masterpiece on Thursday night. Oh my gosh. She's like so gifted. All of our Live with Prima teachers are amazing. They all have their own strengths and their own styles, and that's what's so cool. So she is coming up next. That is a little kitty wampus, and that's what I meant why you kind of want to glue down in certain areas but still let it be free. So what do you guys think? That's the little Paw Patrol for Madeline. And then I lost my cupcake tags. I didn't even glue my sequins on the one because I talked too much and I got too much to show you guys. Here's the original and here's the class one. So very different colors, but I really only used two or three colors in the metallic accents and I colored, like how many different things do we color with those metallic accents? Um, oh, the autofocus driving me nuts. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's really crazy right now. There we go. Uh, we colored 
flowers and uh, some of the trims. We colored the resins. We colored the watercolor paper. It all is so easy to use with these. You have got to get a set. You are going to love them. And you know what? I've been raving about them because personally, I think they're brilliant. Okay? So um, thank you guys for coming. We will see you on our next Live with Prima show. And I will be on the chat afterwards if you guys have any questions. Um, I'll stay on there for a couple minutes. Um, and I'm just, I'm just catching the chat right now to see if you guys had any questions. They are metallic semi-watercolors. Let me um, zoom in on this. They're not like anything I've seen on the market. So they're like a watercolor, but they're semi. So the opaqueness depends on you. Um, they would be beautiful in our coloring books as accents. Um, and look at the colors again inside. Oh my gosh. See that shimmer on that purple that has a blue shimmer? They're gorgeous. And I see a little art stone in the, in the pink. So yours will not come with that. You do get a, a fun little brush though, and there's mixing wells, so metallic accents. You guys have got to get this and then play around and share your projects with us, okay? All right, thank you so much, guys. We'll catch you later.